On today's episode of Don't Blame Me, we have Lisa Schwartz and we talked about having quarter life crisis and sexism at school. Keep listening. Thanks to Third Love for supporting Don't Blame Me. Go to thirdlove.com slash blame now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. Thanks, Third Love. Everyone get 15% off your first purchase by going to thirdlove.com slash blame. Thanks to BarkBox for supporting Don't Blame Me. BarkBox is a subscription service that delivers a selection of treats and toys for your dog right to your door each month. For a free extra month of BarkBox, go to BarkBox.com slash blame when you subscribe to a 6 or 12 month plan. Hi guys, welcome back to Don't Blame Me. This is my podcast. My name's Megan Ranks. We have an exciting guest. It's Lisa Schwartz. Hi, exciting. I like your hair, by the way. Thank you. I decided to switch it up. It's cute. I was stalking you on Instagram. I, honestly, I've been, this is so funny because I've been stalking you a lot recently and not, this was all pre you coming on the podcast. Wait, I'm so honored. Yeah. I feel like I stalk you all the time too. Really? I got yeah. deep. I got so, I got Wait, deep enough into your- what'd in- you find? No, I just, I mean like I passed a lot of holidays and then I was like, I should stop stalking and then- I, Every hair color too. I switched yeah. frequently. I really, lo- but I love this red on you. Thank and the you. caption was, ooh, ooh, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. Your caption was- Something Is this Archie? when you kill me? <laughs> Is it something Archie? <laughs> yeah, it, I can't remember, but I've been watching so much Riverdale. Oh, yeah. And I'm obsessed and I feel Are like you? a teenager. Yes, I don't know why I did it. <laughs> and now I feel like an idiot, but I love it. Do it's you? so bad, but it's so good. Oh, I am going to remain silent on my opinions on Riverdale. Oh, <laughs> shit. I mean- I'm salty because A, I didn't get cast as Sabrina. Fair. Um, I'm salty because I didn't get cast as Betty. Um, and Ooh, you would have been a good Betty. Thank you. I get this. The note that I get a lot is that I don't look, um, which is a very nice compliment, which is not like a shitting on this actress at all. But like the character is supposed to be like a little more naive. And I get that I don't look naive. That's a good thing. It's very nice. But it, it happens all the time where they're like, you know, she just she doesn't look like she'd get the rug pulled out from underneath her. And I was like, shouldn't you write better female characters if that's like a constant trait of being like, we need her to look like she can get fucked over real easy. And Megan looks like she'd pick up on it. And I'm like, I do listen to a lot of true crime, so I would pick up on it. Um, but yeah, so you like Riverdale. I do. I feel like... So the demographic that watches me watches Riverdale. So I feel like it's mm. important for me to like know what's stay happening, hip. stay hip, stay young because I'm getting older. Um, it's a chore. Uh, <laughs> but like then I fell into it. The first like two episodes, I was like, nah, nah, I cannot do this. And then, yeah. and I, then I got hooked. I maybe Maybe I'll start watching it. Maybe I will. Maybe. Put your bitterness aside and jump in. I will. I just get really, I get really, if I'm going to cringe during something, I want to cringe on real, like about reality shows. I mean, we've already talked about it off camera, but The Bachelor, (sighs) it's so good. Oh my God. It's so good. And you guys, Lisa has this show on, it's on, it's on The Bachelor's YouTube channel. It's on The Bachelor. Yeah. They started a YouTube channel. Oh my God. And it's, will you accept this ride? And it's you. I mean, I wish, honestly, I kind of wish you were the Uber driver instead of it being like, you're in a limo with them. That would be amazing. But then I couldn't drink because we just <laughs> oh, get true, like, true, sl- true, true. I just get sloshed with the contestants oh. and ask everything and anything That's I want to ask. what I love though. It's everything I wanted. It's everything I wanted to ask too. And it's so good because you can just tell that everybody goes in, like not that everyone goes in like a little more wary, but after like five seconds, you know that moment you're talking to a girl and you're like, did we just become best friends? Yeah. You have that moment with every single person there and I'm obsessed with it. Like I love people more after, I mean, but you it's everyone who's been eliminated. So I get very sad. So I'm like, Bibiana. Yeah, but we, I know Bibiana was the best. Oh, there was so one person that came on <gasps> um, that didn't get eliminated yet when she came on, but I did not have a good interaction with. Can up. you guess who it is? Um, well, I mean, I hope it's Crystal. Yeah. Crystal? Honestly, if you guys don't listen to the bachelor, listen to the bachelor. If you don't Skip watch the bachelor, honest, oh my god, it is she, she, she will, she is. I made this video of me pretending to audition for the bachelor on my YouTube channel. <laughs> she is that. It's like she watched my YouTube video and was like, "This is what I'm gonna do." Her voice, how she talks, she talks like, "Um, I am like so excited to be here with your family." She like defended it on the show, like, wh- like she said she like had a sore throat or something. I don't know. <sighs> It was just one of those like interviews where like she was really nice. Crystal, you're really nice. But afterwards I was like, 
like is she a serial killer like oh, no. there was like that's what i see there was like a disconnect mm-hmm. and it freaked me i felt dirty i'm after. getting a lot of serial killer vibes from i mean a solid six contestants on the bachelor right now yeah I'm it's getting, a great season it is there's a lot of a lot of serial killers on this season. <laughs> We're this fighting is gonna be the first serial killer. <laughs> Honestly, that's what it feels like we're watching. Um, okay, but yeah. So all the bachelor stuff aside, we're actually filming this podcast for the internet, YouTube. Hi guys. Hi. Um, so you can see our pretty faces. And if you're just listening to this and you want to watch it, um, head over to my YouTube channel to watch it. This is my advice podcast, guys. So this is uh you guys call in, you leave voicemails, and you tell us about things that are happening in your life, and we give you advice on them. So If you want to call and leave a voicemail, the phone number is 310-694-0976. You did it. Wow. I have to close my eyes to do it because I'm like writing it in my head. Um, And if you guys are international callers, uh, we'll probably give you a call to action at the end too. But you can email a voice memo to meganpodcast at gmail.com. And so we'll play them and then we're going to give people advice. (gasps) I give terrible advice. Oh, I think I'm at the (laughs) point now where like we're getting a lot of callbacks of people and I, I'm just, I am just waiting for the day that people are like, Megan, you fucked up my life. I know. Do you have like a disclaimer? Yeah. Don't blame me. (laughs) The title. (laughs) Just speak for itself. Like you can't blame me. Do you have a lawyer? (laughs) Yes. Yes. We literally had to go through like all of like the every, cause like no one can blame me. Also, it's like when Jack was like, I don't really want to talk about like 16 year old girls giving like blowjobs. Like I was like, oh, okay. But I also, that's I'll like that. life now. I know. Yeah. Oh, guys, Mel's here. Mel's Hello. here. Hey, Mel. I Hi. like your jacket. Thank you. That's cute. Thanks. Hey. 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 Okay, now we'll listen to the first girl. Oh, I'm excited. Hey, I'm 16. I live in Canada, and I'm a junior in high school. To put it bluntly, I'm a closeted lesbian. I'm horny as hell, and I want to find a girl to hook up with. But I'm the classic definition of a nerd. I have a 3.2 GPA. I've never been to a high school party. I'm a virgin to all of the bases. I don't drink and I care more about piano than I do about my makeup. I hear what people at my school say in the hallways about lesbians. How hot lesbians are. How they'd like to fuck lesbians straight and all that fucking bullshit. I don't think it'd be safe if anyone at my school knew if I was gay though. More importantly, I need to keep my friends in the dark about all of this. Most of them are banners who come from strict cultures that aren't the most open-minded when it comes to topics like sex, let alone sex with someone of the same sex. When I tried coming out to one of my closest friends last year, she wasn't okay with it. She rejected me, so I had to lie to her to make sure that she wouldn't tell anyone else. I'm living a lie, and I'm okay with that since this isn't my forever situation. I just don't want to put myself at risk right now of being outed to the whole school. I know that I could get a guy if I wanted to because I've had some guys who are actually relatively attractive ask me out before, but that's not exactly what I'm looking for. I just want to find a girl, hook up with her, no strings attached, but without anyone ever finding out about it. I live in a big enough city that most people don't know each other, so I could keep a secret, but I just don't know how I could find a girl to hook up with. How do I find a girl to hook up with without jeopardizing my secret? Whoa, that was a novel. Also, it sounds like she's actually in the closet right now. <laughs> <laughs> Physically Come on, in the closet. <laughs> Get out of the closet. Oh my gosh. It's I was gonna is there like a dating app, a hookup app for because grind well, oh, am I gone? Oh no, I hear myself now. Um, is grinder for for just for guys just for guys but i also feel like all those apps you can like set your settings to like looking for women yeah Yeah. she's 16 though okay oh you can't be on those right i don't don't think think so so um i mean i would say okay nope she can't go to a bar either i was like go to a gay bar um i wonder if there's like on like on AOL, AOL AOL, chat rooms. Know, I'm like <laughs> online forums in which like she said she lives in a big enough city that I'm like you don't have to hook up with somebody from your school but like is there a way for you to find other lesbians who don't go to you okay school? how about this what if she waits I'm like sounding like a prude I think she should wait a little bit okay um because word travels very fast. But yeah. what if she like enrolls in like some summer program elsewhere, like out of Ooh. state, like at an arts college or an all female college and does like a summer program so she can have oh. a summer fling and she could yes. be her real self in another place 
Oh. And then just like wait till she graduates because it sounds very complicated. Also, by the way, if you have a friend who does not support you not in a anything friend. you do, <laughs> not a friend. Yeah, that's so, I mean, that I, I, I understand growing up in places where you're not exposed to that kind of stuff. But especially if it's like a friend coming out to you, you now have a direct experience with someone who you've obviously become friends with and you've stayed friends with who's gay. And now any of the preconceived notions you have about lesbians should probably be thrown out the window because you've been friends with one this whole time. That's kind of how I feel about it. But I think you're, I think that's really good advice, you know, fi- or find like a program, not like a, not like an AA program, <laughs> find a program and make yourself straight. Um, no, God. find like some sort of extracurricular activity. Yeah. That makes sense. That lends itself maybe. Yeah. Because I guess I also being 16, that is, I think I was thinking about it if she was like senior where it's kind of like there's, yeah, because I yeah, I think it's like instead of don't just like stomach those feelings and not act on them if you want to. Um, but also, I would say you're, there might even be some people at your high school who are also in the closet. Oh, for sure. Also, she was like worried about like being a nerd, which like once you're out of college yeah. or once you're out of high school, like nerds are cool. It yeah, just, dude, just you're going to get into college. That's all that that means that yeah, you're a yeah. nerd. That means that you're going to ha- get to go to college. You're going to have a job. I, I wish I was more of a nerd, 100%. I mean, you seem like a little bit of a nerd. I'm like, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a nerd, but I wasn't like an academic nerd. I was like a Harry Potter fanfic nerd. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> I was like this, I was like the kind of nerd that was like, oh, I'm into nerdy things, but like my academic achievements don't mean shit to me. <laughs> so like I didn't benefit from being a nerd. I was just like, I was just a, lo- like, I was a loser. That's the verbal use. I was just not cool. <laughs> but look at you now. Ah, so cool. I watched Jeopardy, which by the way, guys, I got the answer to final Jeopardy last night. It was Trisket fucking stone. <laughs> Whoa. I know I never get well final Jeopardy answer it's so hard my boyfriend is so fucking good at trivia oh that's frustrating I'm so bad at it so frustrating and he's such a (laughs) I love him but he's such a douche about it too (laughs) where I'm like he's like bragging about being really fucking good at trivia so there are all these questions like who was the prime minister of this random country that like isn't even a fucking country anymore it's like obvious blah 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 no yeah so then recently I've been doing pretty good because he didn't know the answer to um, what was a cracker that has been three times baked and has been around for over 100 years. And I was like, Trisket. <laughs> Anything involving food, you're like, I got yeah, this. Yeah, oh, 100. That's it. That's it. That's all you can do. Triscuits are really good. I forgot about those. They're so good. They and little, like, the, the weavy little like, oh, yeah. so good. Um, is that our final? Well, we um, what should she do answer. about her horniness? Masturbate? masturbate. Oh, yeah. Why didn't we erect just that? Watch porn. Yeah, watch, watch porn, masturbate. Um. Yeah, because also I would think I I I'm, I don't obviously can't totally relate to like being in the closet or coming out or anything like that. But I also think that there is an attachment with being horny when you're a girl and especially young and being like, oh, I got to get have sex. and I got to like hook up with people and that kind of stuff. But like that's also something that you can handle on your own. She also said like she wants something like no strings attached, but I'm imagining, again, I don't have that experience either, but I'm imagining if your first lesbian experience, I don't think, I think there's going to be strings. Well, yeah. And your first sexual experience in general, like no matter as much as you can be like, I had like friends who like went to like college orientation. I'm like, I'm just going to have sex with a random guy at college orientation. I can't imagine. Did not fucking like, they're totally heartbroken. You feel really shitty about it. And I think it takes a while before, because I mean, science, back to science. You What are those uh, chemicals that release in your body that make you attached to someone after you have sex with them? Well, something like that, where it's like there, especially when you're really young, I think if you want to explore set your own sexuality then start with yourself and like masturbate and all that stuff and then by the time you have your first like sexual experience with somebody else it's gonna be so much fucking better because you'll understand your vagina and like what you're doing and what you enjoy yeah understand your vagina first dude that i wish they i wish people talk i wish that was like sex ed of like them talking about like girls understand your vagina because they make you look in a mirror do you remember that no but like i meant like in a in a fun way like not in like don't i mean like short look at your vagina make sure there's nothing like you know, I didn't like that part. <laughs> I didn't either. I don't think I ever once took a hand mirror to my vagina, but like, this is a terrible idea. Like, this is like, I don't want to see that. It looks like that. And I'm not going to, no, I'm going to be gross. I know. I'm going to forever. Like. Yeah. No, but I think, um, yeah, I think masturbate. There's no harm. There's no harm in that. And there's no strings attached because you can just have batteries. <laughs> you don't have to plug it in. Cute. Hey. Cute. <laughs> yeah. That hormone yeah. is oxytocin. Oxytocin. Oh, oh wow. I've heard of that before. Yeah. Not to be mistaken for oxycotton. oxycotton. 
Also very addictive, <laughs> apparently. Oxycontin releases in your body when you have sex. Oh, God. I hope we helped. I hope we did too. Um, and yeah, and don't let anyone make you feel bad for being gay because it's nothing wrong with it. Yay. On to the next one. Hi, I am 25 years old and I'm calling about the whole new thing of graduated college, fell in love, got started my career, got married. I'm now a dog mom and I recently turned 25 and I just started thinking like, what's next for me? I feel like I've hit all my big plateaus already and I almost feel like I had almost like an anxiety attack thinking about what's next and Me what am I going to do of my life? Kind of deal. And I guess my question for you is, have you ever experienced a quarter life crisis and what are some ways that you deal with that and move forward from it so you're not in a funk like I've been? Thank you so much in advance for your help and thank you again. I mean, I'll totally admit I am actively in a quarter life crisis. I've been in an active quarter life crisis since like the fall, probably. How old are you? I'm 24. (sighs) Guys, I'm in a 30 life crisis. Okay. So I just haven't figured out by 30. It only gets, you know, (laughs) don't say it only gets worse. (laughs) Fuck. Here's the thing. She's like so much further ahead than both of us. Yeah, 100%. I am not married. I'm Mm -hmm. turning 35 this year. Oh, hell yeah. I don't have kids and I don't have like any plans like in the near future of this happening. So she's doing pretty good. I, I was going to say that too. I think you, I forgive me if I'm wrong, but I think she did a lot of this on hyperspeed. Like this, like having all of that, like being like, you have a good job, you have all of these other things. I think right now, as opposed to I personally, I think the worst feeling in the world is feeling uncomfortable. Like I think it's worse than feeling in pain or anything like that because being uncomfortable and like unsettled, it feels like it could last forever. Whereas like you break your leg, you have a terrible pain. This all came from the fact that like when I got my nose done, I was like, I'm not in pain. I'm just uncomfortable. And that it feels like forever. (laughs) So I think it's like something, things aren't going terribly wrong when things are every, when shit's hitting the fan and things are feeling terribly wrong, you're like, oh, it'll, things have to pick up. It'll get better. Sure. But if things are just like middle of the line, like middle ground, just like kind of stagnant, that feels super, super permanent. Um, I think a, a crisis at any age is totally normal. Um, and I don't think, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I tell my friends this all the time, but I think everyone pretends to have their shit together way more than they actually do. Nobody has it together. No, as much as, and I guarantee you all of your friends are being like, wow, she's got everything. Like she yes. has it all together. Everything in her life is totally great. And you're thinking that about them. And all of you are probably stressed at, at the fuck out. Um, I think my first advice would be don't have a baby immediately because she's a dog, right? Don't do it. Don't look for like the next yeah, thing. Yeah, that's what I would say is like, I think it, as opposed to looking for the next thing to like fulfill, I don't know, like a goal, I would say like enjoy the process of like just existing. Pick up a hobby. Yeah, like do something. You already have a dog, like start a hobby, like start something that has its own milestones that isn't just like, oh, I need these these like very traditional life milestones. Like start a hobby, start, um, and then you can have like mini goals and successes within those things that don't drastically alter and change your life. And they'll make you, I don't know, like plan a trip, like that kind of stuff. Like exercise. Those six, yeah. I was going to say, cause like, that's for me, the, like I get, so I hate feeling like bored or uncomfortable and that stuff. Or and, complacent. Like, Sounds yeah, like she feels exactly. like complacent. That's, like she needs to like mm-hmm. hit these like milestones and like do something. Yeah. It's like this whole, like when Jarrett was on the podcast, we had this whole uh, discussion about um, being productive and about how it's like such a toxic thing. Now people talking about like being productive, being productive, being productive. When you feel like you have to constantly be doing more things, which you might not even be doing everything to the best of your ability because you feel like you constantly have to take on more stuff. And I started working out uh, almost like less than a, yeah, I'm almost at like a full year of working out. And I am a way less stressed. Granted, I've still been in like a midlife quarter life crisis kind of thing, Girl. <laughs> but I've had like, I've been able to set goals and like achieve those goals within that. And I haven't made any like crazy rash decisions yeah, on so other stuff. On. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, so the older you get, the more there's those pressures to hit those milestones that Mm -hmm. you feel like society set out. And it sounds like she's like way ahead of the game, but I do have a really close friend who got married really young. Yeah. 
and then got divorced and then was like, got to get married again, Shut got up. married again. And then was like, well, what's next? Um, okay, we'll get a house, buy a house. Okay, great. Now what's next? Have a kid. Uh, shit, what's next? Uh, have another kid. Uh, shit, what's next? Have another kid. Three kids no down way. the line. And now is like, what do I do? Like, what? Are, there's like literally nothing, like there's not another mm-hmm. milestone. And so I think she's like now creating drama in her life yeah. just to like fill. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I feel like, that happens a lot. And so doing all these things we're suggesting, suggesting definitely helps. Yeah. And also on the flip side for people watching, just because you hit those milestones doesn't mean like you're happy in your life. Like mm-hmm. it's okay to be whatever age you are and not have those things. And I feel like society like really, mm-hmm. you know, like even just like the wedding industry, I learned the $3 billion mm-hmm. industry. That's crazy. That's and it's coming at you everywhere. Yeah. Every magazine you open. So like, to me, I'm just like trying to like push those pressures away yeah. and alleviate some of this, mm-hmm. my 30 life crisis. Yeah. God. Well, I mean, I think ultimately it's totally normal. So know that it's totally normal. And um, yeah, maybe get into sewing, make your dog some outfits. <laughs> or just get a billion dogs. Yeah, just get, Worst advice just ever. Keep getting more. <laughs> just get more just and more and more babies. dogs. Just don't do babies right yeah, now. Yeah, just don't do babies right now. And enjoy, enjoy your marriage. Enjoy your time with your dog. Um, And yeah, enjoy. I would say like plan a trip. Start some hobbies, maybe pick up painting and um, plan a trip and go somewhere. Go to Europe. Yeah. Or fuck it. Just have a bunch of kids and see what happens. (laughs) Start the new Duggar family. Be less less problematic. Become a reality TV show I'd watch. (laughs) That works too. Okay. On to the next call. Hi, Megan. Um, I am a 19-year-old engineering student. Um, And as a woman, this means that I'm surrounded by guys all the time. Um, and my experience in university has made me kind of hyper aware of my position in society as a woman. Um, cause every day I pick up on sexist remarks. I pick up on people normalizing sexual harassment, um, people talking over me, things like that. And when these kinds of situations happen, my opinion of that person all right automatically turns negative. I can't get past it. I can't ever see them as a potential friend. Um, And this has resulted in me being, like, angry, like, all the time. (laughs) Um, And I'm constantly surrounded by people that I have a very negative opinion of because, to me, they don't see me as an equal. They don't treat me as an equal. And I can't be friends with these people. Um, And I feel like my time in my short time at university, I've already accumulated quite a few enemies because of this. Um, And it's not like I get into, like, fights with these people, but I just don't want to be friends with them. and the thing is, I don't, I'm not an angry person. I don't want to be an angry person. But the only road I know out of anger is through forgiveness. And I can't turn the other cheek when it turns, when it comes to this kind of thing. Um, so I guess my question is, how can anyone who encounters sexism or racism, transphobia, homophobia on a daily basis, how can we not be angry all the time? Oof. Holy shit. I have no idea how to answer that. Uh, that's a hard one. I I feel feel like like, I'm angry all the time. Yeah. I mean, first of all, I don't think it's her her job to be friends with those people. Like, she feels guilty that she's not. Um, I don't think that's necessary. And I'm proud of her for, you know, not being. Mm -hmm. I think you, again, it's like goes back to that first question where you have to, like, find your people. Yeah. Because I think, like, I mean, uh, I'm so sure, like she's saying, that, like, the women in this field, that's few and far between – Um, but I think even if you can find other women who work in similar, um, fields, whether like math or science or anything like that, that is typically male dominated and finding women, um, that you can be friends with, because I also don't think, yeah, I don't think you need to settle for that because that is, yeah, I I think I personally, I really respect the, the hell out of people like this caller because I, I'm very much like, I have a very hard time. Like if you, I'm not like you cross me once, like we're done or whatever, but like, I'm like a very, I am a very loyal friend. Like if you fuck with my friends, like, nope, not happening. But also like, I don't, I have zero tolerance for intolerance. And I find when people are able to kind of like look past that kind of stuff, um, that's their whole journey. But I think it's really amicable and amazing when people can really stand up for what they're worth. And if they're the only ones doing it, like if everybody else, if you're surrounded by that all the time, a lot of other people would just kind of be like, you know what? I have to take Cave this. In. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
And I think like staying strong, I don't think that's anything to do with you. And like you're saying, that's such like a woman guilt thing of being like, well, now I feel bad that I'm not friends with these people. Totally. <laughs> like, these people aren't trying to be your friend. They're trying to belittle and you. You don't need to be friends with them because you're going to be out of school soon anyways yeah. and having an amazing career. But I feel like um, the university is a great place to like find like-minded people. Mm-hmm. And there must be like women's groups yeah. or something, even at meditation Mm -hmm. Like totally, totally hippie, but like that helps. Yeah. And again, back to exercise, like all these things to like better yourself Mm -hmm. so that you can be in a better headspace. And just like, unfortunately, this is the world we're living in. And luckily things are starting to like come out and flip. But in the meantime, like you got to just take care of yourself and push, Mm -hmm. push through. Yeah. And, and, and you, we all hear those like stories of women who come up from these fields where they're like surrounded by men and all that stuff. So I think like the what you're experiencing, there's, there has to be other women, either that they're at school at your school or not at your school, um, who are going through the same thing. And yeah, yeah. You don't have to, you don't have to take it. You're, I mean, this is, if this was the bachelor, you wouldn't be here to make friends. Like you're here to get a fucking degree. Like, you're not like, you don't need to be <laughs> friends. You're not the villain. That. You're not the villain. No, you're not the villain at you're all. You're the hero. <laughs> like you are 100% the hero of this story. Um, and yeah, I think like, I think, I think it's great to be a, like a strong woman who's not afraid of not, um, collecting a bunch of friends along the way if they're not going to be supportive of that. So yeah. yeah. Online too, I'm sure. Like there's probably like a ton of people. Oh my God, all to. the women's groups on Facebook. Like yeah. I love being a part of those, like the politically active groups mm-hmm. and just like a mindful like reminder that there's other people out there that totally. are on the same page. And un- it's unfortunate that the people around you immediately aren't. But. Yeah. But you find those people. I mean, even the women in my Pilates class, like they're just fucking cool. And like, I love being able like, I don't know what they do, but we all talk. We can get coffee after class. And like just being surrounded by positive women. I think that's probably. Yeah. What Stick I would to say. the ladies. Yeah. Oh yeah, ladies. Yeah. Da, da, da. What's that song? Come on, lady. Mel is giving. Fuck, why don't you have a camera on I'm your face? Mel's like, <laughs> like, what is she trying to decipher? Come <laughs> on, lady. Duh. I might have made this up. Okay, <laughs> maybe. Fuck this, guys. Go Yikes. on to the next call. Hi, Megan. Um, so, uh, my, my entire life, my older brother um, has been using drugs, primarily heroin and a little bit of meth, but mostly heroin. Um, and about two years ago, he passed away from an overdose. Um, my other older brother, I guess, was messed up by the fact that his brother died. Um, so he started using and is it's consumed his life like so much more than the first one and like the first one was very messed up but this one like he went from like zero to 60 like in two seconds flat and it's like I know I know I can't like fix him I know that you can't like force someone to go to rehab or anything like that like he has to want to get clean and I understand that um but it just it sucks because he has two small kids and they're five and nine and they have been staying at my house recently um because my sister-in-law can't afford the mortgage because my brother isn't helping to pay because heroin um <laughs> and it it just sucks because like he'll show up randomly And the kids keep telling me, I don't want to see daddy. I don't, I don't want, I hate daddy. I don't like him. I don't want him here. And like, I, I, I understand that I wouldn't want to see him either, but like, I don't know how to console them. And like, I don't know what to do for them. And I just, fuck, it just sucks. Like, and I don't I don't know how to deal with this. I honestly don't even know what I'm asking. So I just, uh, this is a shitty situation and please help me. Megan, it's amazing that people like trust you to ask these questions. That's like, uh, that's a, yeah, that's a really like big honor, but also like, whoa. Yeah, dude, that you're, I mean, you're 100% right in saying that really, this is a shitty situation. It sucks. And I, I'm glad that, yeah, like, thank you for that. But I'm so glad that, 
like regardless if anything we say like helps like I'm so glad that you can talk about that and like say that out here because I'm sure there's a lot of people um who like can relate to that so being able to just say it out loud and knowing that you have like support of people who can be like yeah like empathy for that situation um damn that's so hard I think this like requires like actual like uh what's the word I'm looking for like like child protective well, services like this needs like this is like a legal situation yeah. when kids are mm-hmm. I was gonna say I think the the first thing if anyone's a- able to afford getting the kids in therapy just at first I think is like ultimately what needs to happen um and I don't know your financial situation and like the means of like what you're able to provide um but uh if he, yeah, if the 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 wife is is his her brother and the wife are they still together? It's, it seems like it. It seems like, like it. it. Yeah. I mean, I I think whether you can just if you can be the most badass aunt in the world, um, and they don't have if they can't have like a father figure who's able to, I don't know, like be there for them. I think it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter who raises you as long as someone's raising you. And I think like that ultimately, like you can be not, that sounds like putting a lot of pressure on you, but like you, everything that you do, just being around and being there for them is exactly what they need. But I would also say like a child therapist to figure out. Yeah. And also for yourself, um, Mm -hmm. There is a group called Al-Anon, which is for family members or friend members who have addict um, partners or family members. So it's like the other side of AA. So there's AA for people that are obviously trying to recover. But Al-Anon is specifically for people whose families um, are addicts. And it gives you the tools to, you know, be able to deal with the situation and like, I feel blessed that I haven't had that experience, but I know a lot of people that go to Al-Anon and are given, one, a place to talk about what's going on with like-minded people yeah. who are going through similar things and then, again, gives you tools on on how to deal with it. Yeah. But this, like, honestly, when children are involved, like, this, and they don't want to see that this sounds like like there needs to be some legal, like, stuff. Yeah. In. Yeah. Just because, yeah, that's, it's... That's so hard. Like, I mean, I won't get too personal, but like I've dated, I've dated, um, guys who had like, got, like re- in, in recovery or active users of just substances. And I have a lot of members of my family who have been on again, off again, uh, in really bad situations. And obviously they're again, like those people in my family are not like close enough to something that I have to deal with. But I mean, like a lot of them, when kids were involved, had to make choices of being like, I have to think about my kids more than this situation. And it, you're right in saying that you can't force anyone to get clean if they don't want to, which has been, was the hardest thing for me to ever fucking admit and deal with and be like, but no, like I'm going to fix them. Yeah. And like you feel, and I didn't know there were groups like that, which I think is amazing. Cause there's a sense of like when you're, you feel guilty for needing anything if you're dating someone who's like strung out or dealing with that stuff anything that you need all of your needs come second and I think if you have a place to talk about that with like I think it I'm so glad that you can own up and say like this is a really shitty situation that's really hard but not only is it really hard for the kids and really hard for him it's really fucking hard for you yeah 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 totally and, and like, so like she you can get have to take care this. of that yes and I think like as much as like provide like being able to be there for those kids ultimately they're they are not your kids and there needs to someone needs to figure out what to do um and like how they can best be helped and I think also if they don't want to see their dad I think that's completely fine I don't think that there's a necessary thing of being like oh no he's your father like no you need he's to. an addict not yeah. to be an asshole but like those kids should not be no around. you're not if you're that's not that's a safety you're issue you're not being a you're not being a parent if you're an addict like you like you can't be both at the same time like that's not it's not fair to put the kids in that kind of position, but like that, yeah, I think that super sucks. I think I'm sure you guys have tried to stage an intervention, um, before I think, um, I think if that's something that you guys haven't done in a while, maybe it's something like that. But I think also ultimately right now, I think who you should be talking to is your sister-in-law, like your brother's wife. Like, I think that's the person that needs you 
it doesn't, this seems like we a, don't know the situation, but yeah. she's probably struggling. And like way. financially saying that like she can't provide for them because he's not really working. And I think as like fucking dark and sad as it is, I think you guys need to treat this as more of like, okay, this doesn't seem as temporary as we thought it was going to be. Like, yeah. how do we figure out as a family to provide for these kids? Like, how do we figure out this? This doesn't seem like it's, um, I mean, yeah, an addiction. That's also, it's, it's something you're always going to deal with. So I think treating this as a situation of being like, what are these next steps that we do? Because this, we're treating this as like a semi-permanent, they're kind of staying here kind of thing. Yeah. Figuring out a more permanent out solution. For help yeah. from professionals, but- Fuck. I'm sorry that you're going through so this. So sorry. That's heavy. And if you can, just take some time for yourself so that you don't yeah. lose yourself and all this. Yeah, because I think like when when you feel responsible for all that stuff, I think you can forget that this also affects you and you don't need to feel guilty for, you know, maybe wanting to take like a night off and not think about it and hang out with your friends yeah. and do that stuff. Like I think being selfish in those situations, it's necessary. Um, and... Damn it, this sucks. If you live in California, I'll hang out with you and hang out with the children. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, I'm so sorry. Okay, guys, we are going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. When it comes to bra shopping, it's all about finding the right fit for you. And there's only one lingerie brand that offers bras in sizes double A through G and half cup sizes. Guess what? It's Third Love. Third Love uses thousands of real women's measurements and super smoothing memory foam to create bras that fit better and feel great. Did you know that most old school bra brands only carry 15 sizes? Ugh, well, Third Love has 60 sizes, including half cups. Never heard of half cup sizes? That's because no one else does it. I definitely never heard of it in terms of bras, only when baking cakes. Third Love knows that there's a perfect bra for everyone, so right now they are offering my listeners 15% off your first order. Wow, wow, pew, pew, pew. To find the bra that you've been waiting for, all you have to do is answer a few simple questions from Third Love's Fit Finder quiz. It takes just 60 seconds and you can do it all from the comfort of your home, so you never have to have that awkward fitting room experience again. Nobody's touch your boobs except for you and the people that you say, hey, you want to touch my boobs? Try a third love bra. It's so comfortable you might forget that you're wearing it. And if you don't agree, returns and exchanges are always easy and always free. I am usually not a huge fan of underwire bras, but if I have an audition in which I'm like, yo, I don't want my nipples popping out. I should I should wear something with some underwire. Or if I want to have my uh, boobs looking super nice, I will actually wear one. And I just got my t-shirt style bra from Third Love. First of all, it's not like I can wear white shirts and you don't see it, which is remarkable for me because it's super smooth. It doesn't have any texture on it. And my boobs looked great. And guess what? I wasn't hating it all day, which is usually my biggest issue with bras is I think about them constantly. I didn't think about this. It wasn't on my mind. My boobs just were there and I wasn't being like, wow, they feel constrained. So this year, make the change that will change the way you think about bras. Go to thirdlove.com slash blame now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash blame, thirdlove.com slash blame. Get your boobies something to hang out in. That should be their new tagline. Get your boobies something to hang out in, but like saying it like that. I want credit, guys. Thanks to BarkBox for supporting our podcast. BarkBox is a subscription service that delivers a selection of treats and toys for your dog right to your door each month. All you have to do is tell BarkBox how big your dog is and choose a monthly subscription plan, which you can cancel at any time. Every month, BarkBox paw picks <laughs> the best all-natural treats and innovative toys to match a dog's unique needs, including allergies and heavy chewer preferences. Each monthly box is themed country fair, bark ball, poo York City, etc. New and unique toys continue to keep the dogs engaged, interested, and happy. Free shipping on any bark box within the continental US. Woo woo! And when your dog falls in love with something from the box, you can easily reorder it again on barkshop.com or in the bark box app. So uh, if you guys didn't know, I actually don't have a dog, which is still to this day the the worst part about me. Like it's the saddest thing in the world that I don't have a dog. We're in the works of talking about getting one. I'm just going to bite the bullet. I really, really, really want a dog. But um, I decided to order a bark box for my friend. Um, and he actually doesn't know that his dog is getting this. 
Um, his dog's name is Murphy. This is for Leo Howard's dog. Um, and he's like the cutest sheepdog in the world. And he's just like the most cuddly and happy thing. And I feel like a proud aunt or like a godmother who's like bestowing a gift um, to um, someone else. So uh, yeah, I, I don't actually have the stuff yet, but I am so excited because I feel like I'm just like an aunt spoiling a dog. So I'm really excited and I can't wait for it to get delivered and for me to surprise. I'm less excited about surprising Leo, more excited about surprising Murphy. So if you're like me and you don't have a dog, but you want to gift the gift of BarkBox. So even if you don't own a dog, BarkBox is a great, exciting way to gift friends or family members who own a dog some treats for their doggo. Each gift subscription includes toys and treats for a unique theme every month shipped right to your door. And it's a great way to try a variety of treats and toys from local and small businesses that you may not have otherwise been able to find. And all of the edibles are made in the U.S. or Canada. Woo woo. I wish I was Canadian. BarkBox will also replace any items your dog doesn't like from the box. Scouts honor. <laughs> and we'll send you something else for free. Gosh, so nice. Give the gift that keeps on giving and make someone's lucky pup the happiest pooch on the block. Visit BarkBox.com slash blame for an extra month of BarkBox every month when you subscribe to a six or 12 month plan. That's BarkBox.com slash blame for a free extra month. Woof woof. Someone buy me a dog. Okay, guys, we are back, and we're going to take some more calls. Hi, Megan. So I'm from England, obviously, and my issue is with my, you know, my best friend. We have grown up together. We, we've, we're literally family, but we've both, you know, gone through something where we've both gained so much weight. We're very, you know, we're big together, and we, we you know, we joke about that, and we don't mind that, but... My thing is that I, you know, I don't want to be it anymore. And she made a slight, you know, comment saying, you know, maybe if I was skinny, she wouldn't, she would like me less. And my fear is, do I risk my only friend? And she is my only friend, my best friend, you know, for body image? Or is it just, you know, maybe she's feeling self conscious? And if I, you know, lose the weight, maybe she's not she can't look at me every day knowing that I've lost the weight I just I don't know what to do do I carry on with my dieting or do I you know just leave it and stay best friends with her oh this one breaks my heart I, I didn't want to hug her so bad I mean I think she even what the second the second option she said I think that's she knows you know that that's definitely probably what it is yeah. I would say that her friend will feel insecure yeah if she loses the weight and i think it's uh, obviously this is this is what i would say from the perspective of your friend too i think if you guys have very similar body types first of all like i think way more people suffer from body dysmorphia than no, because the amount of times that like I will shit on what I look like and then be like, oh, I wish I looked like this. And my friends be like, that person looks exactly the same as you. I Me. Yeah. Then I think that happens so much. And especially with women um, is that we're so quick to tear down our own bodies without even realizing that like the things that we're idolizing or like looking to achieve half the time we probably look some like they're they're not that different but we see each or half the time it's photoshopped oh my god yeah it's, we it's just put ourselves fair. down way too much so i would say i i think maybe in her eyes she which again i'm not saying that i don't think you're doing this at all but this is what i would say that she might be thinking it's like oh okay we look the same and you want to lose weight do you think i'm fat and like do you not like how i look because you're not happy i think that can be that might be how she feels about that is she feels like it's not it feels like it's an attack on her which it's definitely not I think it's so much like even like you're saying it's so much more about you um, or she's just not ready to like take that leap and like yeah. try to lose because it's hard and not mm -hmm. only is it hard like physically but it's hard mentally to like accept like okay I need to do this I mm -hmm. mean it's such a, like a deep rooted oh yeah thing so like she might just not be in that place to take that next step but what would be awesome is if they could do it together, together. there's nothing better than having like oh. a partner to keep you accountable yes. but there's obviously a lot of fear in that mm -hmm. in the friend and she's just like not ready and like you got to take care of yourself. And again, we've talked about this mm -hmm. earlier. Like if, if, if you're not, if your friend doesn't support you on an endeavor, then 
That's, yeah. That's obviously her own issue. And either she's going to come around as a friend and realize that. It's not that. your responsibility. No, but your health is comes first. You got to yeah. take care of yourself. And good for you for like totally. wanting to take that step. That is hard. That's like the yeah. story of my life. Just constantly trying to lose weight. It is hard. It is. And to be like, I'm going to start doing this. And then the, holding yourself accountable and really trying to push forward. And it's super, super hard if you don't have your friend's support. It's like, you don't want your friends being like, no, don't do this. No, don't do this. Don't do this. So I would say, I, I think exactly of what you're saying. It's like, go for it. Do you like start a health fitness journey? I would say, um, I would also advise coming from someone who like works out a lot. I would really advise any sort of diet or anything you go on supplement with exercise. Cause I would say a lot of the time I find, um, when kids are or any age, like when you're losing to lose weight, it becomes just about the food and just about everything that you're eating as opposed to like exercising and all this other stuff. So I would say like, if maybe, maybe she doesn't want to actively start losing weight. Um, but maybe it's like, Oh, you're changing what you're eating and all that stuff. But like, you're also going to go on a walk later and invite her to go along with you. Totally. Just, you're not going to turn into like a green juice soul cycling person overnight that your friend's going to be like, well, we don't relate to each other anymore. Like you can still like hang out and like eat food and watch movies. Um, but like include her on in on something. And I think maybe, I mean, I think starting any sort of like health journey is just scary because yeah. you don't know like what the fuck am I going to do? I don't want to look stupid to like also start slow. Like you don't yeah. have to like restrict everything because then you won't stick to that. Mm-hmm. So like start slow yeah. together. And it also starts another unhealthy mindset. If like food is not the enemy, like food is fuel. Like you need food to like, I mean, I always like, I love, I mean, I don't fully relate to the saying of like, um, live, live to eat. Don't eat. No eat to live, don't live to eat, which I don't fully stand by because I, there's a lot of food that I'm like, no, I just, I, I, like I was put, put on this planet to yeah, fucking yeah, eat rotisserie totally. chicken. Like it brings me a happiness. <laughs> rotisserie chicken. That's I, your thing. I love, I just licked the mic. I love a good rotisserie chicken. I mean, chicken. I like, I get it, but like, that's the one. Oh my God. I, I, yeah, I'm giddy. I'm like fully smiling right now. <laughs> don't you get like whole rotisserie yeah, chickens and, and just, just like, eat them? them. <laughs> like all at once. Yeah. I mean, I know I can't like fit the whole turkey of the chicken in my mouth at once, but like, can I ask you a question about chicken really? Fast? Yeah. Do you guys find it weird that there's like endless amounts of chicken? Like wherever you go, there's always chicken on the menu. Like where do all the chickens come from? Like there's just never any chicken. Do you see the movie Chicken Run? <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of chickens in that movie. I'm just like, it's weird. Yeah. No, you're, that makes there's sense. like a lot of chicken. Like they can be either. out of avocado, but they're never out of chicken. Never. And it's literally oh. on every menu. I'm from the chicken capital of the United Where's States. Where's that? Springdale, chicken. Arkansas. <laughs> That's where the headquarters for Tyson Chicken is. Oh, wow. <laughs> Have you been? Is it creepy? It's there? like right down the street from my house, but no, I've it's not like a tour. It's not there. like Hershey. Yeah, no, they don't want not. you to see what's <laughs> happening. <laughs> they don't there. want you to see the chicken. Yeah. Wow. Uh, no, you're right. That anyways, is like really, that's my thought. No, I, chicken, I, yeah. I've never thought about that, but it's that that gives me literal food for thought. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I would say like I don't. I I think any. I don't know. I think there like a lot of people can develop. I think everyone does at some point, like unhealthy relationships with food and it becomes the, it either becomes like a source of comfort or it becomes the enemy. And I think where I don't believe that you should only eat to survive, like, fuck, you should eat things that you enjoy and bring you happiness, but, um, but not going too crazy on anything. Cause like, A, you won't stick to it. And then it's also, you're going to, you should just be so fucking proud of yourself for even starting a journey as opposed to beating yourself up for like slipping up or like messing yeah. up in anything like that. Like Start just taking slow, the steps. Cut out like soda. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like do like little things. Mm-hmm. And also like, again, consult like your doctor or, yeah. you know, go to Weight Watchers or something like that to like help you. Because I feel like, okay, you can like Google all these. Diet. Like I'm oh always God. like, what's the latest diet? You know what I mean? And like it's Cayenne so Cayenne pepper. Oh. I remember in high school. Remember oh the master God. cleanse. <gasps> Just shitting yourself all the time. Also, don't buy Fit Tea. You don't sponsor. You're not no, sponsored by no. Fit Tea. Like, I already shit enough. I don't need any help with that. Sorry, like, guys. <laughs> there's just too much. There's too much like uh, products being thrown. Too many yeah. products being thrown at you. So it's like confusing. Just like try to eat like Whole Foods. Yeah, just like not I, like at Whole Foods because it's expensive. <laughs> really but I do love Whole Foods. <laughs> I love Whole Foods too. No, but I That's mean like my addiction. all those fad diets. I remember before I was um, before I was like official. Yeah, before I was like. Uh, 
act, had active celiac and was like actively allergic to gluten. Um, my friend and I, before our junior prom, went on like this special K diet where you literally were allowed to oh, eat yeah. two, <laughs> you're two, bowls, eat of two bowls of special K, <laughs> breakfast That's and lunch. Awful. And then you're allowed to eat whatever you want for dinner. So naturally we're eating absolutely a fuck ton of like terrible, disgusting food for dinner because like we've only eaten two bowls of cereal like during the day. That's awful. It's terrible. <laughs> like it, it's one of those things like it makes no sense. There isn't, it didn't There's last. There's no science behind no. that. No, also like it's literally sponsored by Special K. I mean, brilliant marketing campaign. <laughs> Just eat two bowls of cereal and like you're fine. Just no, stick and, to like vegetables and yeah, proteins. And- yeah, and I think including your friend on stuff, like not pushing your your journey on her, which yes. I don't think you would do. But I think like if you guys want to go out and like go get food somewhere together and like not judging her food choices, but like, oh, be like, oh my gosh, I went to this really great restaurant. Like, let's go get this. Or like you can make dinner for both of you or go on a walk or go to the or, beach. Yeah, or walk to the restaurant. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So it doesn't have to be like you're not turning into a totally different person and you're also not going to like force your journey onto anybody else, which I think she might be a little wary of. And who knows? And maybe you'll make you'll make this whole journey and this whole like health thing seem a lot more accessible and it'll make her want to. She's like, oh, also, you're not maybe miserable. there's a place where she can actually like have a conversation. And because mm-hmm. right now she's assuming oh, true. what this friend is Very thinking. True. And like I mean, I think best friends should be transparent. Yeah. Even though sometimes it's hard. Mm -hmm. But like just being like, so what's like the hesitation here? Like, I really want to do this. Like, do you want to do it? And maybe she was even joking when she made a joke like that, like about being like, oh, I'm not going to like you if like you're not, if like if you're skinny, like we're not going to be friends anymore. Maybe she was totally and completely joking. And like with this also sounds like something I would do. Like someone would say something as a joke. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you hate me. I'm out in my own head. I can't make any decisions to do anything because I'm going to lose you. Totally. So like maybe she was totally kidding about that. And like you could even just say, being like, hey, like you're saying like uh that that comment I don't know if there was any truth to that or anything but it freaked me out a little bit made me a little nervous and I know that you know I'm really wanting to start I'm starting on this whole health journey and I would love and even just saying I would love your support in it and you saying that I might lose you really makes me scared and I really want I really want this for me and I really want you to want this for me and (gasps) write that down that was good write it down right now replay it um, I think, yeah, I think that's what I would say because a, maybe she was joking. And then also if you make it about, I don't know, like, like as fun as it would be to have a gym buddy, I love having a gym buddy. Um, ask her to support you as opposed to being like, please do this with me. Yeah. 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 Cause, Cause I think that puts that's too much pressure and she already, that friend already has enough pressure yeah. in her own head. So yeah, totally. Totally. Okay. Oh my God. We're helping people. Yes. I fucking hope so. <laughs> I can't wait to get rotisserie chicken after Ugh, I love chicken. But where do they come from? <laughs> Why are there so many? Of Springdale, them? Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On to the next one. I am 21 years old. And about two years ago, I got out of, well, I guess it was two and a half years ago. I got out of an abusive relationship that I was in for about two years. And I am now in a new relationship and have been dating, have been dating this guy for two years now. And, um, we've gone through a lot of crap regarding my last boyfriend. He's in prison for rape and he's just a really bad guy. He's sent guy, he's sent people after me, like via text message. He's had people stalk me and he's basically saying that I'm not free to date someone else until he gets out or crap like that and this has all caused me to have a lot of anxiety and depression and my current boyfriend has been very accepting and patient with that stuff but lately he's been getting really I don't know antsy for it to be over and he's getting really moody about it and he's just starting to care less about my I guess side effects of this abusive relationship and I just really don't know what to do I feel like I need to be over it but I'm not and it's just really hard I need some advice whoa call the police like what are we hang up and call the police I don't know if you've got I mean restraining order right and I'm I don't yeah that's kind of like where my mind automatically went is like he shouldn't be able to get in contact with you um, because you should 100% have a restraining order. And also it will coming from somebody who's looked into restraining orders. It won't be it that he has a record. So like that automatically makes it not nearly as hard. Um, I would change also, your phone number. Yeah. Make sure you've moved. Like 
don't take these things lightly. No, I mean, I would, all of those things, I think if you are genuinely, if you're afraid for your safety, that means that's not you being crazy. And I think going above and beyond in any precautions. Um, I don't know if you, I think having a restraining order and I think also consulting a lawyer on being like, hi, what should I do? Because obviously when something happens to you, you feel like so many of your feelings or so many of your actions are, are just drawn from your own emotions. When they're, you, you just said this to two people who don't know you, who definitely were like, no, oh my God, you're not crazy. Like this is, you don't have to be over this. I think the re they came trying to keep in contact with you and do all of that stuff. That's why you're not over it. Like it's because you haven't had a clean break. Right. And you're going to, no matter how long it's been, this is going to be scarring. You're going to have like any sort of side effects and any sort of like anxiety, depression. Like I think that's w totally justified and valid, but I think you need like, the fact that he sent people after like, like that's witness protection program shit. Like, I don't know yeah, if he's been like harassing you over text message, but like you should have a full blown restraining order. And that I, I not feel bad about it because no. clearly he's in jail for bad things. It's not like Holy you're like making fuck. this up. Like this is like a real deal. Yeah. Um, Definitely, I would go to therapy mm -hmm. because you got to work through that stuff to be able to have um, a healthy relationship. And I don't, God bless your boyfriend for yeah. sticking around. But like, I also like, that's exhausting. I've been on both sides of like, you know, someone's going through something. I've yeah. been the person and mm -hmm. I've had a partner try to help me and vice versa. And at some point, like that's exhausting. And, I, and yeah. he's doing his best, but like. I think maybe he's mentally checking out because he just, that's, that's a lot. He's taking it on is. your stress and his own. And, and I think, I think you should 100% go to therapy. And I also don't think it's a bad idea for you and your boyfriend to go to therapy together because you're these, these P I don't want to say PTSD because that's like, that's just, that's an actual term. And I'm not sure if that's anything that you're experiencing, but I've been through like not nearly as bad as this, but I've like been through like pretty shitty relationship situations, which then directly affect my other relationships that you're in. So I think because you came from an ab abusive relationship, it's it's not that this is like a work abuse thing. And then you go into your workplace and you have those like triggers and anything like that. Like this is a relationship that was terrible. And now you're in a new relationship. That's great but it's still a similar kind of context that I think that you guys should go together to figure out a, he can figure out how to help you the most. And B, you can also figure out what, what it like being conscious, conscious of his feelings in this too. Um, because I think like, yeah, like it's a total toll on him too. And that like worrying about other people stresses you the fuck out. And I think, um, yeah, I would say I say solo therapy and then I would also say couples therapy for both of you. Or maybe to offer a different look at this is like, she's still young. Yeah. And maybe it's time to just step away from that relationship for a second. Yeah. If it's meant to be, it'll come back around and like take care of your mental stability mm -hmm. and like get a hold of like what's going on in you, which is like totally justifiable. Oh my gosh, right. Yeah. We all have to work on ourselves and you got thrown a really crazy wrench. Mm -hmm. But like to really make yourself the wholest version of yourself. So when you do either get back with that. Yeah. guy or enter in a new relationship you're in a better place because mm -hmm. I had the same thing where I like had like um, totally different but like you know sort of a traumatic end to a relationship and I drug that into the next one oh, and it yeah. didn't go well because I hadn't properly processed mm -hmm. so then I was like putting things on my boyfriend like I was like yep. you know like I was like a you, you know, project everything exactly projecting mm -hmm. and like assuming that he's going to be doing the same things that part, you know and it's just yeah. like maybe just like take a break from being in a relationship for a second and really like try to get your head on as straight as possible in this situation. I mean, I think, I think that's such, such good advice. I started dating when I was what, 15, 16. I did not have a break between dating until I was like 22. Whoa. Or no, no, maybe 21, 21. I think right after my 21st birthday, I broke up with this other guy that I was dating. And then finally I was like, you know what? I need to fucking be alone for a minute. It is, I'm not a bad person. It's not like, and I was putting fault on myself in these relationships. Being like, why can't I make these work? Why can't I do this? Took a fucking break and then was able to come at this with being like, okay, I've been able to heal these wounds that I've had from exes and different relationships for the last like, 
eight years that you kind of tend to like hop into other stuff. And also not to like totally don't want to shit on you for saying that you hopped from one relationship to another. When you go through something traumatic, you need comfort and you need support. And I don't know your other situations, but it's so sometimes it's fantastic to find that in like a romantic partner. But I think if you ultimately feel like this, he isn't the right guy for you or you feel like you do need more support than you're able to get from him. I think maybe you need to have, like you're saying, like a little bit, some some alone time to really focus on healing yourself and then also not feeling guilty if you if that doesn't happen overnight. Because I don't want you to feel guilty for being like, why am I not over this? Because it's a fucking massive traumatic oh thing. Oh my God, I'm not over it I'm for not, you. Yeah, <laughs> and like, like I, I can't imagine living living that and dealing with that every day. It's and scary. you don't need to apologize for how you're feeling, but I think you need to really focus on like what you can do to A, make yourself really safe um, and also make you feel feel better. Like, I don't know if those wounds will like ever fully go away, but be able to grow from that and, and not have to feel so shitty because damn, that fucking sucks. Okay, guys, we're doing producer's corner now, which is this a callback? This is a callback. (gasps) Okay. So someone's going to call back or they've already called back and we're going to play from a previous episode. Yeah. This is from episode 21 with Claudia Saluski. And Mm -hmm. it's, um, about the lady that was married and yeah. they have different political beliefs. Ooh. Okay. She was, d- both her and her husband were never, they weren't like strictly Republican or strictly right wing. They were kind of both middle ground. But at this previous election, she was a Bernie supporter and then she became a Hillary supporter and her husband became a Trump supporter. And then in the last, <sighs> since all of like, since this has happened, they're married. And so since Trump has been in office, he ended up being like more and more to that whole side. Yeah. What? Yeah. And so then she basically was like, I don't know what to do with my marriage and that stuff. And so I will say, here's what I'll fucking know. Let me address this first. There was a lot of, first of all, <laughs> okay, whatever. First of all, I did not know I had so many closeted Trump supporter, like fans who watch my channel. I don't think you follow me on Twitter because if you did, you would have unsubscribed so long ago. Um, I'm not really going to you apologize. You are blowing my mind I, right now. I know. I'm not going to apologize for anything that I said because I really do stick by what I said. And if I came on here and apologized, that's me just lying to you. Um, so I, okay, I'll get basically what I had said, which fuck, I literally, I fully, fully still stand by this. I basically said, if you voted for Trump, um, you either condone the fact that he's a racist because you are also racist, or you can look past the fact that somebody's racist by, which then in turn still makes you racist. Yeah. I said that a lot of people got very offended. I think if you got very offended, maybe it's time to do some like, I lost out- a lot of uh, followers <laughs> during the election. Yeah. Actually. Oh, the, f- fully same. People were like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm sorry. Do you not know where I grew up? Do you not know my whole story? Um, so yeah, so I still really very much stand by that. And I think if you felt very threatened by that, that I think you should do some you know, like internal reflection. Or about this just why. isn't the channel for you. <laughs> this probably isn't the content for you. Um, but so the advice that we gave her was basically in any other standpoint, again, I'm not talking about Republicans at all. I'm talking about specifically like Donald Trump and his supporters. This, his election and his platform is based so much on his absolutely ridiculous, insane, like morals of like things that he believes. And I think that this has become such this, he's, this isn't just about being fiscally Republican and like liberal when it comes to like social issues. This is a totally different, like just a totally different like game. And what our advice to her was, was why, if you can still actively support him after everything that he said about whether it's like minorities, whether it's about women, like how he treats all these other people, the things that he wants to do and the things he wants to take away from immigrants, all of that stuff. It's not just about being fiscally Republican. Like you're condoning all of these really fucked up things, which tie back to morals. Like, how do you feel if you had a daughter, like that kind of thing, like a man who can treat women like that, supporting a man like that, that for me, I'm like, that is a very big warning sign in someone that would potentially father your children. And I think that's what we had told her was basically just like, we like if it was any other political candidate, I would say, just don't talk about it. But if it goes back to morals, we said that other bigger issues would probably happen due to moral issues that weren't just about like their political views. Correct. We thought it was probably that. So this is her callback, which. Oh, wow. This is exciting. So I was the woman that was married to the Republican and um, I'm still married to him. Um, He has since denounced Trump. Um, It took a lot of uh, very serious conversations. It took a lot of me pulling 
statistics and different factual things to kind of open his eyes. He was very against Hillary during the election um, because of the uh, felony accusations and treason accusations. Um, But I've always known him to never be the type of man that would um, think of women as lesser or minorities as lesser. Uh, He was a huge support when I went through um, a sexual assault situation and amazing through that. I'm also a minority and obviously he doesn't have a problem with that. So it was so shocking to me that he would be okay with a man that was so against these beliefs that he had previously. And in his mind, it wasn't that he was for Trump, it's that he was against Hillary. Now, since Trump's presidency um, and more things have come out, he has denounced Trump and um, is looking for better options with me as far as who we're going to vote for in the next election. Um, Thank you so much for your advice. I just thought I'd give you an update and you have a great day. Oh, my gosh. That makes me so happy. Yeah, but it also scares me. I mean, I'm happy for her yeah. situation, but he was just uneducated. I know, I know. Um, the fact that she had to, like, pull out statistics and stuff, like, that's that's so telling of, like, one, I hate the, like, argument. Like, we just didn't want Hillary, so we voted for Trump. But, like, uneducated in the fact, like, it didn't take the time to, like, you know, I mean, there's so much information yeah. out there. Didn't even take the time to, like, look and make sure that person you're voting for is someone, like, mm-hmm. you wholeheartedly— uh, I know I that I mean yeah I mean I've been even like on Twitter vocal before that was like it was never a perfect election I don't think like anybody went into this being like oh I totally stand by these people all the time also at the same time (laughs) I grew up I grew up with like a family that was very both my like I grew up like with people who like worked in politics and all that kind of stuff so like I've been around that my whole life politicians are just no offense just like typically like it's a it's a very corrupt job like it there's never anyone who's going to be absolutely flawless I watched Scandal I know how Works. Come on, guys. We fucking seen it. Fitz hot. By the way, I saw him at the airport and I was like, is he hot in real life? I have a picture he's, with him. He's a daddy. Yes. Oh, I know. I love He is it. so, so hot. He's so hot. Um, but yeah, so like I I I would say that it's su- it that completely sucks. And I also think that that that's also a huge issue that I, I mean, again, not to say that I was talking, I wasn't talking shit about the comments a little bit, but like people who then automatically were there like, well, what about like Hillary? I'm like, well, the issue is right now is our current president. So I think anybody, if you, I think this is a really great example of um, whether or not you voted for Trump or whether or not that you are unhappy with like our current um, political climate. I think educating yourself on all sides of it accepting the fact that like, this is who our president is right now. So the next action is supporting candidates who are going to run and finding ways to like work on your, like with your like local legislation and do everything like that of what you can do being proactive with that, as opposed to just like blindly, I don't know. Just, like, and blindly doing what that. this woman did, which was awesome, was educating someone who was uneducated yeah. and like it helped save her relationship. And the more we can like reach out without being preachy, mm-hmm. you know, because no one responds well to that. Like, yeah. and, I don't know. And we're not in an election anymore. That's the whole thing. Like, it's not like you're trying to convince him to vote for Hillary. Like that ship has sailed. It's about seeing the facts that are laid out in front of you and like what our current like what our current president is saying or, and doing. And just because you voted for him in the first place does not mean that at this point you should, you, if you feel it, you don't have to continually to support that right. and focus on like who, who should be in office next. Ugh, Ugh. stress. It makes me, but I'm I, happy for her. Me too. I had like a very heated, long political discussion for like three hours this weekend. And I, it may, I wanted to take a nap. <laughs> like I was like, I am exhausted. Well, you have to check. Like, so I think there's like a balance of like being proactive and educating but there's also like you gotta like turn it off once in a while oh my god like get I off have facebook, to get off facebook. <laughs> I, and I, I don't follow him i can't read his tweets no. like that i can't even listen to the man speak oh now i'm gonna get all i the know i know i, I get can't fucking heated it just is very stressful it is to me and it makes me cry it makes no genuinely genuinely i remember sitting i can point to the part in the kitchen i remember sitting on election day just like like on election night just like sitting in the corner just like crying on the floor Oh, we had champagne like ready to go and it's oh my God. still in the fridge. Oh, that's so... It's, so every time I look at it, I'm just like... <laughs> so and, like, sad. Oh man, what a night. That's 
talk about Fuck. PTSD. Gosh. Okay. Well, I'm glad that things are really working out for you. I'm really glad for your marriage. Um, yeah. Because, good communication. Yeah, good because, communication. And good, like, I, um, uh, and good on him for like, yeah going for both it. of you being able and being open because like I know I'm so fucking stubborn but like both of you a not giving up on it which I think like I don't know if we said to give up on it but I'm saying like not running from yeah, the problem and really really working at it and Mature. then him also being open to to change I think that's amazing so I'm that's really it. happy for you guys and I hope everyone in the comments is happy because everyone was like don't tell them to get divorced which we did not tell you to get divorced. Okay, well, that's it for our episode. Thanks so much for Guys, being here. Guys, this was depressing. <laughs> <laughs> but you're helping job, people. <laughs> we, we are, did. no. But you know what? It's it's hard. It's a hard job. I, I can't believe you do this all the time. You definitely went in here with like cousin fucking questions. Yeah, I was like, like, what are we talking you, about? I'm give that? you some very dark stuff. Um, but you <laughs> but guys, that's life, y'all. That's it life. Is. It's it's light. It's dark. It's like a painting, Bob Ross. Um, <laughs> so uh, where can people find you on socials? Oh, we'll leave it in the link below. Um, I'm youtube.com backslash Leesbug. You can just put Lisa Schwartz in. And Lisa Schwartz. It'll pop up at some point. So I hope you guys like this. If you <laughs> did, give it a review on the Apple Podcast app. Um, again, if you want to watch Ooh. the video version, it's on YouTube. And if you're listening to the audio version, go um, subscribe on the Apple Podcast app. And if you want to call and leave voicemails, for next episodes, you can leave a voicemail at 310-694-0976. One more time. 310-694-0976. She didn't even write it down. I I'm didn't. Impressed. But I still have to like either squint or close my eyes enough that I can just like see it. Um, and yeah, call back. Now, we would love to hear like callbacks and updates on stuff um, to the girl who fucked her boyfriend. Well, obviously you had fucked me. Obviously I fucked your boyfriend. The girl who fucked her boyfriend's twin brothers. What's up with your life? Like if you're still and listening. And also do the twins have the same penis? Yeah. Do they have the same penis? Also, if you're a twin out there. No, never mind. I mean. <laughs> nope. No, never mind. I Send the pics. <laughs> Send the Compare and contrast. Um, yeah. Highly curious about that. Um, international yeah. callers. Oh, international callers. Don't worry. We didn't forget about you. You saw how you saw and or heard how excited I was when that British accent came through. Um, you can email your questions or your predicaments to meganpodcast at gmail.com. Just record a voice memo and keep it keep it quick. And if you don't have an accent, just use a fake one. <laughs> um, <laughs> or just really play up the Canadian if it's a little more subtle. I love Canadian. I love a good Canadian, eh? Um, and yeah, we will see you guys in two weeks. Goodbye. Bye. Blame Me is a production by me, produced and directed by Jack Ferry, associate producer Melissa DeMons, edited by Melissa DeMons, post-production sound by Chris Henry, and music by Giacomo Picasso and Ryan Hunter. I will see you guys in two weeks, and don't blame me if your life bursts into flames before then. (laughs) 